Hi, my name is Tim Sway, and I'm making this video for the In the Labs With series for Vectric. And so I guess this is In the Labs With Tim Sway. But as you can see, my lab is more of a burned out abandoned chicken coop. But in that chicken coop, I have a CNC machine. And today we are going to use it to make a tool of mine that I came up with called the Sporkchilla. I am personally very interested in multi-tools and I wanted to bring that to the kitchen. A few years ago, before I had CNC tech, I made this Spoonchilla on the bandsaw out of a piece of firewood. I gave it as a gift to my wife and I thought it would be useful uh, cooking dinner because sometimes when I cook I want to stir and I want to scoop but I also want to flip. So <laughs> I made this but then I got into the world of CNC and I thought I could improve upon this design. So I invented the Sporkchilla and it's basically the same thing. It has a spoon on one side and a spatula uh, on the other but I added this little fork to it for like pulling pasta out to test it and I have a laser engraver now, so I was able to laser engrave my logo. Um, so I made that about a year ago, and now for this video today, I decided to improve upon this design. And here is the Sporkchilla version 2.0. You can see I added a little bit of more functionality to the spatula head. It still has the fork, but I added this hook for pulling the grate in and out of your kitchen stove, and uh, you can push it back in with that one. And on the spoon, I added this little rest, so when you set it on the counter, it doesn't put the dirty part on the counter. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. I'm going to carve out a new sporkchilla, and I'm gonna show you how I did it, and all of the files are free and available at Vectric.com for you to download and make your own sporkchilla. I should be selling these plans, but instead I'm doing this because that's just how I roll. I'm no expert at CNC. I've only been doing this for about three years now, and I'm able to design and create these using the Aspire software. So basically, I think the reason they want me to do these types of videos is because if I can do it, like literally anybody can do it. Before we make this real quick, let me show you first some of the materials and then the tools that we're going to use. This is sort of my storage area of my workshop, which as you can see, it's full of garbage. I work exclusively in reclaimed and upcycled materials, and you can find some really cool stuff that way. It doesn't just have to be, you know, barn wood. Like for today's project, I'm going to make my spork chilla from this piece of reclaimed kumaru decking. Uh, one of my clients had replaced their deck with Trex or whatever, some synthetic material, and the entire deck was made of this Brazilian hardwood, which is so heavy it broke a shock on my truck bringing it home. Um, but it's super weather resistant, which makes it good for the kitchen. And um, it's beautiful. So this is just a cut off piece from some of these like long 12 foot boards that I've run through the planner already. And we're gonna find a spork chilla inside this. We're gonna cut this out on my Avid CNC machine, which I'll show you in a second. But I just wanted to point this out real quick. I recently started experimenting with this uh, Maslow CNC is called, which is sold by MakerMadeCNC.com. These are $500 machines that you assemble yourself and they require some tweaking and finagling to get them working right, but that's where the savings is. They're not as fast and as efficient as an expensive machine, but you can do a lot on these for very little money to get you sort of in the game. And I use VCarve with this and it works uh, perfectly. I design on VCarve and then I save it as if I'm saving for a Inventables XCarve and then that G-code will run this just fine. This is my beloved Avid CNC machine. The company was formerly called CNC Router Parts. Um, and this is a two by three bench top model they make. It's a real sort of great way to get people into the world of CNC without having to get into the giant machines that they also make. My waste board's a little shot and I need to resurface it, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just scraping it down with this tool it's a tool I actually invented called the Square, and I designed it in Vectric, but I had someone with a laser cutter cut it for me, like a like a big industry sort of machine. Um, and it's just sort of this multi-tool that I invented. But this is the kind of thing that using the Aspire software, like I never could have done this before. The original one of these I made, I cut by hand out of steel, and it wasn't accurate at all. Vectric software is not just for running your CNC. It's also pretty useful just designing in general, even if you're not going to cut it yourself. Uh, the other thing I do in... When I level my wasteboard, you can see I, sh I put a magic marker, a sharpie, into the chuck of the CNC and I have a file where I draw these lines to just sort of help me visually line up where I'm putting things on the wasteboard because if I use just the edge of the MDF, this might not be straight, but these lines are definitely 
in sync with the CNC router. The Free Aspire file uh, has the spork chiller drawn into a four inch wide by 18 inch long by one inch thick block. But this is actually a little bit bigger. However, I set the file up so it starts in the center. So it doesn't matter if you want to use a slightly larger piece as long as it's starting in the center, it's gonna cut it out of the center. I like to sort of oversize it a little bit when I can just so I know that where I put my mounting screws and whatnot will not be in the way of the project. So I'll just quickly find my center. And now I'm gonna drill four holes in the corner so I can just screw this right into my wasteboard. I know that I don't have to worry about my router hitting it. Center it and go. So cool. Okay, let's look at the actual Aspire file itself and I'll sort of show you how I made it. So there's the block of wood that I created, four by 18 by one. And you can see I've already done my geometry and I have all my shapes sort of drawn out. You can see I created these three circles as um, guide pins. I'm gonna put some of them into the wood and some into the wasteboard and I'm mirroring them onto the back side so when I flip it upside down, I can guarantee my position is correct. You'll see more of that in the build video. I'm showing you right now with this triangle here. I draw it, I copy it to the other side, and then you can see it's a mirror image so it will always line up when I flip the pieces back and forth. And then you'll also see that the actual sporchula shape itself is there and I also used the first offset and layout tool to create a border around it about a quarter of an inch larger than the shape. And that's what I'm going to use to set my tool paths for my 3D roughing and finishing so I know I go beyond the shape of the sporchula. To create the handle, I did a basic two rail sweep, it's called, from the modeling tools. And you can see I have two lines that run down beyond the handle section. And I created a half circle um, to use as the shape that I apply to the two rail sweep and there you can see applying that to the sweep and I have half of my circle. I also could have gone into the clip art menu and found some dowels or circles that were already pre-made by Vectric but I wanted to tweak the shape a little bit so instead of just using one of their circles I was created my own to just manipulated the way I wanted it. It's not perfectly round, you know? Um, around the edge of the spoon, I created a slight barrier, and then I also created a dish on the interior of the spoon. So it would be a bowl, obviously. On the back side, of course, I did the opposite. I dished it out instead of in, and that's how we get our spoon shape. So here you can see I'm just showing uh, how I use the node editing tool to create some of the other shapes based on the main outline of the sporkchula. I use that first offset layout tool to create a mirrored image of it on the inside and then I edited that to do what I needed it to do to create these parts. Here I use the basic shape modeling tool and I just dish it out by creating, taking the bowl shape and making it a negative instead of a positive. And I did, a, like I said, a lot of just sort of clicking and looking and seeing what it looked like and making minor adjustments until I got it the way I wanted it. Um, this is just, you know, not showing all of the work, just the basic idea. Now the spatula head is also a two-sided shape. So on the top side, I wanted to make it curve in a little bit. And you can see I created some geometry on the left of the screen and I applied that to a two rail sweep. There it's backwards, so I had to swap the rails. I applied it to that top and just a rectangle just to get the basic amount of material up there that I needed shaped the right direction. Then I adjusted it to make it fit. Once this was all done, I was ready to flip it over and create what I needed on the back side. I also pulled some of the quarter inch uh, 3D tabs out of the clip art menu to steady up the spoon while it's sitting and getting carved out. Um, I made some adjustments to this later, which you'll see that the, the ones I put in weren't quite enough because I wasn't supporting the thinner parts that were getting the heavier carving done. But this is how I started and that's all I did is I dropped them in, but I made sure they went beyond the outline that I'm gonna use to do my 3D carving so they would stay attached because if you just select 
that you want to carve the entire model, it will actually just carve out right around those tabs. So you have to be careful of that and make sure you do it right. Now I'm on the back of the spoon. You can see I'm dishing in reverse the bottom of the spoon. And I'm also adding that lip, which is just using all the basic create shapes from vectors tools and experimenting with the heights and the shapes. This is something I do a lot. If I'm not really sure how a tool works, I'll put in some like ridiculous number, like I'll raise it by five inches instead of 0 0.05 inches just to see what happens in large scale. And then I'll of course hit the undo key and then go back in. And that helps me visualize what's happening and really learn how all these things, you can see I'm doing it right there. I just made this, this point like a ridiculously large size to look at it. And then I started adjusting it to see what would look right and function with the Sporkchula. I added some tabs to the back and created a little bit of a flat shape of that sporkula spatula part as well as some kind of smoother pieces to kind of connect the handle to the, the tool ends. And then I added some more of those tabs to make it a full circle so it would be on both sides. And now it was time to start creating my tool paths. I got lucky with this one that I was able to make the whole thing using only two tools. I used a quarter inch end mill to do all the roughing and a quarter inch ball nose to do all the final carving. So that was enough. I was able to get it into those shapes that I created and uh, for them to still function the way I intended. So I got real lucky with that. I didn't have to do extra changing of router bits. I have a couple tool pads that are set up for here and I don't want to get confused. First thing is I'm roughing it out with a quarter inch end mill and then I'm also going to put these position dowels in with a quarter inch end mill. So I'm going to merge those two tool pads together because they're using the same tool. I'm going to call this file one with a number top 25EM. The 25EM stands for a quarter inch end mill. Save that tool path. And I just save them right to my desktop and delete them when I'm done usually. So one top two five EM. And then the second one I want to do is my finishing tool path on this top. So I'm going to save that as two 3D finish as it defaults to. And I'm going to call that two five BN to remind me that I'm using a quarter inch ball nose BN. Um, and then I can flip it over. My third path is going to be the guide markers. Uh, so, and that has to be by itself so I can set everything up. So I'm going to call this three guides two five EM. Then I'm going to do the roughing tool path, which will be four rough two five and mill EM. Then I do the finish, which is five, five finish two five ball nose BN and then my final is my profile which is six final profile two five end mill there we go now we're ready to cut Now here you can see for the guides that I'd set up, I reset my zero to be right at the wasteboard level and I just drill in about three tenths of an inch a uh, couple holes. For position markers, I tend to use old short pencils and I just stick them in the hole. I make a 0.3 inch hole. You'll see those on the file and then cut a little bit off. But I also save them so I don't have to waste pencil. I save them when I can. And now since these are not like perfectly measured or corner or anything, they can only go in one way, so you can't accidentally put it in wrong. As I started roughing out the backside before I even got to the finishing pass, I started noticing some problems. The quarter inch tabs I had put in were in good locations for me, but not for the tool. Where I'm doing the most carving for the longest time and where it gets the thinnest is up where the spoon head is and the spatula head is and they were not supported. So I was noticing that my cuts were not that clean because things were chattering. Nice, now this is the first time I've cut it since I modified the file. 
and I think it's just a wee bit thin. I mean, I don't want it to be too thick because I want it to be heavy, but you can see it got a little bit too thin right here in the tip, and we want it to last while you're cooking. So I'm gonna edit the file to make it a little bit thicker. De Went through and I cleaned up my CNC files a little bit and I'm cutting another one today. I'm about to do the last ball nose pass on. I went and I made this a lot thicker. I added a tab up here to make it safer and a tab down here. I might have gone a little too thick with this. We'll see. We're gonna find out in a minute when I do my final cut. I'm excited to see it. Now this file is going much better. You can see it's all done. Everything looks, the finish is better because it wasn't chattering around. I have these stronger tabs. So now I'm gonna cut my profile tool path and there'll still be some tabs to hold it in so it won't fly free. And then she'll be done. Um, I think it's important to stress the fact that when you are designing something from scratch, your first design is not necessarily gonna be your best one, and it takes several iterations to get through to get to where you want. So this is like the fourth or fifth one now, and you know, it improves in design and in function and in machining each time. So that's, if I were to you know, be setting up a factory or something, obviously all these things are important. So um, don't be discouraged if you cut one and it doesn't work right. You know, sometimes you need to keep going. Okay, so we just have our final uh, cutout path to do. Do you wanna set up the Z for me, Vince? That's my son Vance. He spends a lot of time in the shop with me and he has his own YouTube channel. Look for Vance Maker. Nice. The final profile cut was kind of screwy and I think it was because I had applied it to the model shape instead of just cutting air and running around the profile. So we'll try to fix this up before giving you the file but uh, it just kind of took a long time. It was a little silly and I ended up just stopping it because it ended up cutting all the way through anyways but I don't know what I did wrong here. Maybe someone could tell me. The reason the toolpath was kind of weird is because I had applied the toolpath to the 3D model, so it was actually following the contour of the model as it went around. You don't want to project it onto that, you just want to do a, just a straight cut going around, and that has been fixed in the file that you will get to download. There you go, remember you always want to pull the trigger before the blade is touching the thing. Wanna do this one? That's my favorite. <laughs> and there we go. Does it need any sanding? No. <laughs> you sure? Well, I have to do it. <laughs> you done yet? Vance and I like to have fun and make silly jokes. Um, I did have to do a little bit of machine sanding just to get the tabs off that I had created, and then the rest of it was just a little bit of hand sanding. I didn't obsess. You can see I left the head of it much thicker this time so it wouldn't break in the machining process, and now I can just very quickly sand it to the thickness I want. I want it just a little bit thinner than that. It's almost there. See there's all these little lines that are tool marks from the CNC? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get those all out if I can. But I'm also not gonna go too crazy the obsessing CNC over. Can go the the well, the CNC is a robot, it only does so much. Although it would be cool if we could make a sanding CNC. Oh, right? that's just to put a sander on there? Actually, yeah, that would work. What if you made it where it has a pause, like a five-minute pause? and you put a sanding bit on it and it does and it goes over again and it spins. That would be cool. Most finishes they say are food safe once they're cured and I'm sure they are but anything that I'm going to cook with or put in my mouth all I ever use is something that I would actually eat directly whether it's cured or not. So I'm going to use mineral oil to finish it and I also have this is uh, mineral oil and beeswax uh, that I mixed together myself that I'm going to put on after getting it nice and oiled up first. By the way, I ate beeswax at a nature camp. <laughs> I, I, yeah, you have eaten beeswax. How did it taste? Like water. 
chewy water, water flavored gum. Huh? Now I can't turn the camera off. Lick them. Here you can see the progression of the design. This is Mark 1, as the Brits might say. We would say version 1 and then version 2. Uh, and then version 3 is definitely an improvement. I feel like it's a little more elegant and a little bit more functional. I forgot to mention that I did sand off a little bit of the top of the spoon that the model has. There's this thin little lip there that just sort of the way it worked out and I sanded that to the way I liked it. And then as far as cooking goes, you can see you can actually stab things with that poker or pick things up and that head shape contours to the bottom of a spoon or a saucepan now, whereas before it was square and it didn't fit against the edge as well. So those were some of the improvements, plus the rest and the ability to pull the oven rack out. I'm really pleased with it. I think it's a very useful kitchen tool, and um, you can make one today. The Sporkshill file and other free project files are available for download from your V and Co account at Vectric.com. So you have to log into that to get these. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to Vectric's channel to get more free projects like this from me and other Vectric users. Thanks a lot, and be good. Thank you.